Go to the Inbound Rules tab, press the Edit Inbound Rules button. In the Inbound Rules window, type 100 in the Rule Name field, and change the type to All Traffic. Then press the Save Changes button. Let's do the same exercises for Outbound Rules. Double check Inbound and Outbound Rules. It is exactly as we have on the diagram. Hello from the Clouds Guru. Welcome to a hands-on tutorial where we'll navigate the AWS console and master the art of setting up a VPC from scratch, from selecting the right resources and configuring your subnets to understanding the nuances of network access control lists. This guide covers it all. Strap in, as we take a deep dive into efficiently creating and managing your AWS virtual private cloud in mere minutes. We are in the AWS console window now. Choose VPC service and open in a new tab and we are in the VPC dashboard. Choose VPC resource link and open it in a new tab. You can see two VPCs, one is default and the other one which I just created using CloudFormation. Let's create a new VPC. Press the Create VPC button. You can see Create VPC template. Let's stick to the VPC only option. We specified name tag test. Then, Provide IPv4 cedar block 10.10.0.0 slash 16. At this time, we don't need the IPv6 cedar block. Tenancy is default. We don't need additional tags for this video's purpose, but in actual creation, you will need multiple tags for different use cases. Press Create VPC button. We have successfully created Test VPC. All details are on the screen including among others, VPC ID, state, and IPv4 cedar block. We copied to the clipboard VPC ID, this will be very helpful during the coming configuration. Go to subnet tab. We pasted to the search window VPC ID to confirm that our template didn't create subnets. As you can see, there are no subnets in the VPC, let's create first one. We are in create subnet template. Then select the correct VPC ID. As you can see, we pasted VPC ID from the clipboard. Specify subnet name public subnet A. Chose availability zone A in the London region. Input correct IPv4 cedar block. Press the create subnet button. We have now successfully created our first subnet. We need to repeat the same steps for the public subnet in availability zone B. and private subnet in availability zones B and A. We just created the last one, the fourth subnet. Time to create Internet Gateway. Press the Create Internet Gateway button. Specify name. Submit it by pressing Create Internet Gateway. The Internet Gateway is in detached state. We must attach it to our VPC. Just remember one Internet Gateway per VPC. Go to the Action drop-down menu and select Attached to VPC. Select Test VPC ID and press Attached Internet Gateway button. Test Internet Gateway was successfully attached to Test VPC. The next step is to create NAT Gateway. We are now in NAT Gateway template window. Specify Name. Specify Subnet. Here is a very important subnet that must be public and based on the diagram in Availability Zone A. We need to allocate Elastic IP. This gives NAT Gateway public and private IP addresses. NAT Gateway is a bit pricey. That's the reason I decided to create it in one AZ. Press Create NAT Gateway button. We have now successfully created the test NAT Gateway. The details section shows us the pending state. It takes a few minutes to be available. Meanwhile, we will create root tables. Go to the root tables window. Let's check root tables associated with test VPC. We have just one default root table. And we have to create four root tables. Please remember that the subnet can have just one root table associated. In the create a root table template, we will provide the name. Specify test VPC ID. And submit the creation button. The subnet association tab is empty. We need to associate the root table with the subnet. Press the Edit Subnet Association button. Select the correct subnet, in our case, Public Subnet A and then Save Association. Now, we need to edit Roots. 
By default, we have local root entries. We need to add default root 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 with target's internet gateway. Then save changes. Double check what we have configured. The root table is associated with public subnet A. The root table has two static routes, one local and one default root with a target internet gateway. Repeat the same steps for root table public B. Root table public B we will associate with public subnet B this is the difference. Now we have three root tables, one is default and the other two which I created. Let's create two private root tables A and B. Steps exactly the same just root table entries are slightly different for root 0.0.0.0/0. The target is NAT gateway instead of internet gateway. Local root and or default root with NAT gateway as a target make subnet private, please remember it. Let's double check all root tables for test VPC. Public and private subnets have the correct root tables associated. The last bit is to create a network access control list. Select on the left pane under security network access control lists. We can see two knuckles which I created and three defaults. I pasted VPC ID to the search dialog box. Now we can see that one default knuckle created with our VPC is associated with four subnets. Our design uses two knuckles, the first one public associated with two public subnets, A and B and the second one is private associated with private subnets A and B. Let's create public knuckles. We specify the name public knuckle test. Then select the correct VPC ID. Press create network ACL. We successfully created the first knuckle. The next step is association with subnets. Select the knuckle by clicking on the tick box. Go to the action drop-down menu, we can select edit subnet associations. Or go to the subnet associations tab and select the edit subnet associations button. In the edit subnet associations window, select public subnets A and B. Press save changes. The next step is to add inbound rules. Rule number will be 100. Let's keep the type custom TCP and the port range from 1 to 65,535. And then, hit the save changes button. We can see the inbound rule now. The next step is to add outbound rules. As you know from previous videos, Knuckle is a stateless firewall, and to allow return traffic, we need to create a return rule. In the outbound rule window, press add new rule. The rule number will be 100, type is custom TCP and the port range is up to 65535. Oh, our design is all traffic and port range is also in all. Let's change it, follow the design requirements. Press change button. Double check inbound rules. And outbound rules. Inbound rules is not as designed. We must make corrections. We will change from custom TCP to all traffic. And now we are good. Inbound and outbound rules are as designed. Let's create a second network ACL. Specify the name private knuckle test. Select the correct VPC ID and press the create network ACL button. Our VPC has three knuckles, including one default and two which I created. This time, from the drop-down action menu, we will edit subnet associations. We are now selecting private subnet B and A. Save changes. Go to the inbound rules tab, press the edit inbound rules button. In the inbound rules window, type 100 in the rule name field, and change the type to all traffic. Then press the save changes button. Let's do the same exercises for outbound rules. Double check inbound and outbound rules. It is exactly as we have on the diagram. In this comprehensive tutorial, we walk through the process of creating and configuring a VPC within the AWS console. Covering essential steps from selecting VPC services, setting up public and private subnets, to establishing network access control lists, we provide a clear blueprint for AWS mastery. With a keen focus on details, we have demonstrated the seamless creation of various AWS resources, ensuring our VPC setup aligns perfectly with design requirements. Thank you for watching Gurus. You are now well equipped in creating VPC using the AWS console. Be sure to like, subscribe, 
and hit that notification bell for more cloud insights. See you next time gurus.